This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. We're broadcasting from UNESCO headquarters in Paris, France, and we're ending today's show with the former president of Finland, Tarja Halonen. She was elected in 2000, becoming Finland's first president, served until 2012, two six-year terms, the most that a president can serve there. Her election came a hundred years after Finland became the first European country to be given um, uh, the right to vote to women. Um, the, in 2009, Forbes named President Halonen among the 100 most powerful women in the world. Since leaving office, she's become a prominent advocate for gender equality as well as transparency. Earlier today, she spoke here at UNESCO at the IPDC talks to mark International Day for Universal Access to Information. Um, President Tarja Halonen, welcome to Democracy Now! Um, in the United States, uh, until Election Day, many thought uh, in that last few months in the general election that the United States would have elected their first woman, um, Hillary Clinton. Uh, that didn't happen. President Trump was elected, um, a man who a number of women said had sexually assaulted uh, them. He said that um, he would sue them after the election. That hasn't happened. But your thoughts on um, President Trump and also the importance of women being in positions of power? So I have not, um, I have never met uh, President Trump personally. So my um, my thinking about him is, is uh, uh, from the media, uh, from uh, his uh, own twittering and, and uh, all that. But uh, I always say that when, when uh, my friends in USA say that uh, Trump won, I uh, said, so yeah, yeah, won, because you have so funny system, because uh, Hillary Clinton got the most of the votes. In, in our country, she would win. Uh, but that's another point, and I know it's a very, very uh, difficult. But I think that— um, you, she, Hillary Clinton got almost three million more votes, yeah, but he exactly. won the Electoral College. Yeah. yeah. So, but uh, I think so that— uh, um, when now the women have uh, been empowered in many countries, and, and so um, let's say so that women have been taken seriously now. So also the contradictions have come much stronger. The hate speeches against the female politicians, journalists, NGO activists, the human rights uh, defenders, and so on, uh, it's a new tone. But. Uh, if I want to see something positive in that, it is that now they take us seriously. Earlier they thought that, OK, you can have a good choice, but, uh, but it's not dangerous. But nowadays, um, it's, it's a different situation. I said in Finland when, uh, in the foreign ministry, foreign service, some uh, 20 years ago, we got more and more women ambassadors. I always said to the men that, just don't worry, uh, smart men will survive. And so that's it. But I think also that, of course, the competition between the genders have become harder because it's more equal possibilities for boys and girls, men and women, and we have to continue in that way. Um, I want to talk about health care. In the United States, uh, President Trump tried to repeal Obamacare. Yeah. Um, it looks like the last effort was made this past week, though it's being repealed, it's so. in a sense, in other ways, mm -hmm. um, by starving it. But uh, Bernie Sanders has introduced uh, Medicare for All, um, the idea of health care for all. Finland has a lower infant mortality rate, better maternity care than the United States, highly cost-effective health care. Um, can you talk about w how Finland implements health care, ensuring the health of its citizens? I, can, I cannot uh, do it in, in very briefly, but I, I was at— uh, Harvard University in Boston in the time when Obamacare was uh, passed, uh, uh, in the time of the previous president. And so I, I was very astonished that it was so, so difficult, thinking that it was, uh, of course, a reform, important reform, but compared to the Nordic system, and even with, uh, among Nordic countries, our system, which came as the latest. So uh, it, it's, it's very modest. I think that one of the issues is that if you can have a coverage of the public health service for all people, so, of course, um, you can benefit also uh, the, uh, the fact that uh, you do it for all and you don't need, need to select. And, and of course, also, the 
financing system is important. I think that one of the problems in USA is the uh, financing system of the healthcare, that you have so many actors and insurance companies and the others that put this together is very difficult. But um, after all, everybody says that not only healthcare, but also other public services which help people uh, being more well-being, uh, in the long run, they will save money, of course. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, everybody is uh, uh, welcome to, to come and see the Nordic sisters. There are the differences between the countries, but, but uh, we are well known for that, that uh, we make it with less expenses. You're also known for your education system, Finland's school system ranking among, well, the world's best. No standardized tests. Students spend less time in school physically than students in other Western countries. Explain the Finnish approach to education. I think that this is um, easier to, um, to explain because we, uh, we have a full confidence with teachers. So it's not only the question that, of course, we have the national legislation concerning the, the targets, the goals of the education system and the, all the principles. But then um, the local authorities have the possibility to formulate fitting to the local uh, circumstances. But then the schools themselves, they are also pretty independent. So they have the school boards where are the, uh, the people, parents, but also uh, so local politicians and, and experts and so on, and the representatives of the, of the uh, pupils. And so I think that this independency with the very high quality teachers, that's, that's the secret. Um, our teachers, uh, they all get, of course, the university degree, and um, the institutions can choose so that only 10 percent of the candidates to these institutes will be accepted. So they get the best of the best. And uh, the last point is that this is not very highly paid. It's about the medium compared to the other salaries. So I think that the respect concerning uh, education, lifelong learning, and the teachers is the basis. Can, that... you, can you talk about the rise of the right in the last minute we have together? Yeah in Europe right now? I mean, you have the far-right party in Germany, Alternative for Germany, AFD, entering the parliament. And we have had this, too. We have the so-called Two Fins party, which was uh, similar. Now it's split in two. But what we... about this and the attitude especially to refugees? So I think that one of the reasons was that politics uh, had become too much uh, discussions between uh, they call it elite, I would, I would say, uh, professionals. So that even the language what the politicians and the advisors use was something different what people use in, in everyday life. And those political parties who has understood to listen the voices of the people um, have been successful. But I would say that when you listen, you cannot be just an echo. You have to give also the good, smart, uh, true answers for the very often difficult issues. And that's why uh, I think that uh, all political parties have to start listening more carefully, but also to give the more responsible responses to people that they understand that this is not like a miracle like that. Uh, and, and I think that this is also true. So the highest wave of the populist parties is now coming down, but it doesn't automatically become better if we don't work very hard in order to, to translate these modern society problems. I want to thank you so much for being thank with you. us, Tarja Halonen, former president of Finland, first woman president of Finland. Once is not enough. <laughs> <laughs> she says once is not enough, served until 2012. Forbes named her among the 100 most powerful women in the world. I'll be speaking Friday night in Winnipeg. Saturday I'll be in Halifax. Sunday in Guelph. And then Sunday evening in Toronto. Juan Gonzalez will be in Kansas City on Friday night. You can check our website. Also, today's talks at UNESCO in Paris will be live streamed at UNESCO.org. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks so much for joining us.